This is Dina Marie, and I'm back with Pilgrim leader, author, and Catholic convert, Steve Ray. We've been talking about some of his upcoming and just recent pilgrimages, but also he's going to take a little bit of a retreat with us here in Beaverton at Our Lady of Peace Retreat, and we're really excited to host him for that week. It is the Catholic Education Retreat, July 10th through the 15th. And if you heard, you know, Steve talking about he and his wife reading their way into the Catholic Church, it's really that reading that openness to Jesus. Jesus Christ, his church that really brings us close to his heart. Uh, Steve, you're going to be offering classes throughout this week. And what I love is there's three classes per day. There's an evening lecture. There's mass, of course, every day. Time for uh, prayer, adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. Time to just have quiet walks outside. And then maybe time, like you said, with groups to talk, to converse, to share your faith stories. You are going to be focusing on a couple of things about Mary. The theme is mystical union of Mary. But I want to ask you, why Mary? You know, you came from a Protestant evangelical background into the Catholic Church. What role should Mary play in a Christian's life? Well, I, she's the queen of heaven. And how do you relate to the queen? I mean, if you're living in Britain, you know how you relate to a queen. And she is. She's the queen. She's the mother of God. She's a very special person. What other person has a relationship with the Trinity that she has? We all have a relationship with the Trinity, but her much more so. She is the chosen daughter of the Father. She is the chosen mother of the Son and the spouse of the Holy Spirit. What other person has those three relationships? Now, all of us have a relationship with the Trinity, of course, and we're going to be raised right up into the life of the Trinity. But she has a unique relationship with the Trinity that we will never have because she was the mother of the Son and the spouse of the Spirit and the daughter of the Father in a very special way. So I, I, she plays a very important role. Unfortunately, when we are Protestants, we we didn't want to ever appear to be Catholic, so we pretty much ignored her. She wasn't important. Um, she, she was important, but God could have used any girl to have the baby. And in fact, we had a guide one time, a Jewish guide in Israel, and he was when we went to the um, in Nazareth at the Church of Annunciation. He said, "Well, God came down. The angel came down and asked all the girls, and they didn't weren't interested. And he asked Mary, and Mary said, "Okay, I'll do it." And that's how it was presented. And pretty much that's how um, flippant that we were as evangelicals. But once we understood, I have to say also that I learned more about Mary from the Old Testament than I did from the New Testament. And people say, well, what are you talking about? She's never even mentioned in the Old Testament. Oh, yes, she is. I will bring enmity between the woman and you and your seed and her seed. And she is the Ark of the New Covenant. So you go back and look at the Ark of the Old Covenant. There was nothing in Israel that was more sacred and special and untouchable than the Ark of the Covenant. And Mary becomes the Ark of the New Covenant. She's the new daughter of Jerusalem. She is the new qu uh, queen of Israel, queen of heaven. She fulfills all these roles and, and they're all there. The new Eve, she's the, uh, the new Eve with, with the, uh, it's just, it goes on and on with the Old Testament. So her role is very important uh, in, in the church. In the Old Testament, let me, I'll say this in 1 Kings chapter 2, 19, Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, walked into the throne room, and instead of, you, you never do that. You never walk into the throne room without first being summoned. And she walked in, and Solomon got up off his throne, but then he prostrated himself on the floor in front of his mother, and he sat back on his throne. And that morning when you walked in, there would have been one throne in the throne room. But by the end of the day, there was another throne sitting at his right hand. So now you have two thrones and Mary's at his right hand and she becomes the queen of heaven and she was the intercessor for the people. So all the way through the Old Testament, you read when a king is appointed as a king of the country of, the, of Israel, there's always mentioned his mother who sits at his right hand. He had a lot. Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines, but he only had one mother. She So in Israel, it wasn't the wife that was the queen it was the mother so if, if, look at look at that in the whole economy of the catholic church and the in the king of israel he appoints his queen and there she is so we better treat her with a little respect absolutely and i love the phrase to jesus through mary and and that being a convert myself, that was a new phrase. And I thought, how does Mary, but she does lead us. That's her goal. It's not to stop at Mary, but she does lead us into the heart of her son, yeah. our Lord. 
and uh, her that's lord why, that's why we see in scripture when jesus says this is your mother to john he's a prototype of all of us he's in a way giving mary as the mother of all of jesus's disciples and when and the two times that she's mentioned in the gospel of john is is at the cross of course the very end of jesus's earthly ministry and the first time she's mentioned in john's gospel is the very first moment of his earthly ministry at cana so at the very first moment and the very last moment of it that's how john bookends jesus's ministry is with mary and both times he calls her woman referring i'm sure back to i will bring enmity between you and the woman all the way back to the garden of eden in both of those places he said jesus calls his mother woman I think is an allusion back to she's going to be the one to fight the devil. And and um, who told Jesus when his earthly ministry was going to begin? Mary did. Jesus said, my hour has not yet come. And she said, yes, it is. Get started. And he did it. So this is um, Mary. And, and Mary is, for example, in the Old Testament, it wasn't the queen that answered your prayers. She would go to the king. And so in a way... You can ask me to pray for you, and I will, and I'm a mediator in a sense. I pray, you ask me to pray, I pray to God, God, would you bless Dina Marie? Oh, yes, I will, okay. And Mary is the same. She here, she is the intercessor. She's the queen who becomes the intercessor for the people, and she brings our request to the king. We can pray to the king, too, but just like when my dad told me, Steve, when you become, he, he's been dead now 10 years, but he said, when you come Catholic, you're going to pray to Mary instead of to God. And I said, no, I'm still going to pray to God. But I said, don't, he said, there's only one mediator between God and man. And that's Jesus Christ, not Mary. And I said, dad, don't ever ask me to pray for you again. And he says, why not? I said, because as soon as you ask me to pray for you, you're putting me in the middle. You're making me a mediator. Mary is just a much greater mediator than I am. And you are. Yeah. Oh, that's so true. Steve Ray with us, and he's going to be teaming up with a great community for Our Lady of Peace. Their Catholic education retreat is this July 10th through the 15th. Registration is going on right now. Steve, for those who are going to come on retreat with you, just give us a sense of some of the ways that you can connect with the retreatants, just what they might expect when you come. You've got the talk on the Holy Family. You'll also be talking about, I'm going to look forward to this, the 11 sorrows, unknown, unknown sorrows of Mary. So right. we have to wait to get to the lecture for that. Yeah. But what do you hope to do in terms of engaging that retreat audience? Well, a lot of people talk about Mary in a in a a spiritual more, you know, so the queen mother and, and uh, praying to her in the rosary. I, I'm going to do something a little different in both of these talks. I'm going to introduce people to the real Mary, the girl who walked around Nazareth, the 15 year old girl with flies buzzing around her head, carrying water from the well back and forth in her little bare feet. And, um, the, and I know, cause I've been there 180 times. And I have walked all of those routes many times where the whole, where Jesus and Joseph went to work in Sepphoris. I'm going to give, I'm going to take you on a daily life of the Holy family, how they lived and what they were. And it's very different from what we think. And it'll really make people enjoy and love Mary more, I think, by understanding who she really was and what her daily life was like. The, the 11 sorrows of Mary, I've actually added another one. It's the 12 unknown sorrows of Mary now, but it's, what that was is, we don't realize all of the sorrows that she had in her life. And as we go, as I go through these, these uh, meditate, I did the talk last weekend this, and, and people were just bowled over by it. They said, I have a whole new appreciation, understanding of Mary now that I never had before. So that I'm looking forward to that. And I'm going to share my conversion story and just uh, be with a bunch of good folks uh, who love the Lord like I do. Awesome. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you, Steve, again in July. If people want to learn more about the retreat, it's olpretreat.org. For folks who want to join you on one of the cruises, one of the, the Wisconsin tour sounds very exciting. Are any pilgrimages your website and way to stay in touch with you? catholicconvert.com. Very easy, catholicconvert.com, and you can go everywhere from there. I love it. Okay, Steve. Well, God bless you. God bless you and Janet on your travels. You. And again, we'll continue to pray for the eternal rest of your mother. May she rest in peace. And we'll look forward to seeing you in person in July here in Oregon. Thanks so much. Very good. Great being with you.